coverage of the Innovation Prize for Africa is proudly brought to you by the African Innovation Foundation. Hundreds of Africans solving some of the continent's biggest challenges recently gathered in Kabarone at the Botswana Innovation Hub. They were there for the Innovation Prize for Africa. The fact that the prestigious event was hosted at the same time as Botswana celebrates 50 years of independence was not lost on the audience. The event itself was celebrating its five-year milestone in helping to shape the innovation landscape in Africa. To date, IPA has attracted more than 6,000 innovators from 50 African countries, making it a truly pan-African initiative. The IPA is run by the Africa Innovation Foundation, the brainchild of Jean-Claude Bastos de Mores, an entrepreneur, venture capitalist and philanthropist. About my vision and where it comes from, um, I'm Swiss and Angolan, and uh, from uh, the Angolan side, I have always had a very close relationship with my grandmother and um, when she passed away I promised her to do something different for the continent. Uh, <clears throat> doing something for the continent was a challenge for me in terms of I've asked myself because I've always been in business what can I do in order to, to make a difference. Um, and then uh, um, I looked at the legacy of, uh, of my family on, my, um, on the side of, uh, of my other grandmother and my grandfather from my mother's side, which uh, my grandfather was always a, an inventor. He's invented the light in the watch. Um, and uh, then I said, okay, what can I do for, for Africa? The best I can do is, is creating things because that's what I continuously do all the time, I create try to change, I try to disrupt, I try to challenge uh, uh, things and um, then basically <clears throat> I had the idea of creating an African Innovation Foundation. There I wanted to give, uh, transfer some of my knowledge to, uh, to the African uh, youth and to the African population and the thing which I, I want to do is really unlock the potential we have here because uh, me going around, I see tremendous potential. And uh, so that, that has been really the key. How can I unlock the existing potential? And uh, um, so I've created that foundation, uh, <coughs> which uh, then I used a little bit of my um, business approach, not just doing uh, one single thing, but to create kind of products. And uh, uh, the African Innovation Price um, has been then the logic uh, consequence of that. Um, then to create the price for innovation, I was looking around and I was saying to myself, what is needed? It's about unlocking, but through what? Through the spirit. People need to, uh, need to, to get this uh, innovation spirit, need to believe that they can. Over the five years, the IPA has grown in leaps and bounds. Pauline Mujawa Maria Kubel is the program director for the awards and is responsible for managing the innovation and technology programs for AIF. So we started off in Addis Ababa and right at the initial uh, award ceremony we got endorsed by African Union where they passed a resolution indicating that they were calling on African nations to work with the African Innovation Foundation through the Innovation Prize for, for, Innovation Prize for Africa to really catalyze the innovation spirit but also promote a culture and they, you know, have a funds for supporting innovators in Africa. So there it was just a good beginning. And then from there the second was was uh, took place in Cape Town in South Africa. And it was just another level. Uh, we had uh, we had it in the background of WEF, so we had a lot of uh, innovators, uh, innovation enablers, business people, investors attending the awards, and uh, it was just a good, amazing vibe in the room. And from there we went to Nigeria, and just again bigger and better. The numbers, of course, the quality of applicants continue to increase. But as we moved from Ethiopia to Cape Town to um, 
Abuja and then in Morocco and then now uh, Botswana. What has been amazing is that how people who came you know, during the first year, they kept coming. So this is, it became like a movement where we started a community in Ethiopia that is now growing and growing. It's like one family, a community, talking innovations by Africans for Africa and really eager to collaborate and take those solutions to the users. This year's IPA was in partnership with the Botswana government. Botswana's selection as host country for IPA 2016 is due to its commitment towards building its national innovation ecosystem. I think it is an important partnership because Botswana has just established Botswana Innovation Hub. We need the experience of organizations and countries to support and anchor our initiative. And I therefore believe that out of our partnership, we will be able to enrich, broaden, and uh, create, give impetus to what we do and what we want to do. A country that once relied heavily on their commodities for economic growth has had to look at economic diversification. The Botswana government has looked at the innovation ecosystem to move the country from resource-based to technology-driven and knowledge-based. The Botswana Innovation Hub is just one example of this. One of them is Botswana Innovation Hub, uh, obviously. The second one is the establishment of Botswana Institute for Technology, Research and Innovation. The third one is the establishment of Botswana International University of Science and Technology. These are broadly our areas of focus where we would want to support and grow innovation. As the Ministry responsible for the coordination of science and innovation, we are hopeful that this oversight responsibility will give opportunity to our collaborating partners within government and the private sector. The private sector is important because we are hopeful that they too will come to the party by way of a buy-in in terms of supporting some of the innovative ideas, some of the inventions, which ultimately can be converted into products which can go into the market and grow the economy, create jobs and uh, give us new opportunities. The two-day event saw African innovators and innovation enablers network, share knowledge, explore business opportunities and boost collaboration. Like this year what we have done in collaboration with the Botswana Innovation Hub and of course the government of Botswana is to put in place this innovation village where actually there's a marketplace where innovators are show showcasing their products. And, and this year also we made an effort to make sure that we are inclusive. So we actually went all the way to uh, identify you know, people who are innovating in a traditional knowledge area to make sure they're inclusive. Because people tend to think of innovation as just technology. And so we are inclusive. Plus then there is a cultural event yesterday, you saw that, which is for us a statement that culture, you can't separate innovation with the culture. Because innovation has to be in the context, environment, culture is a part of it, the design. You can't talk about design without creating. So that's what you see IP. You see high tech, the culture. You see, you know, people coming from different background. You see policy makers and the innovators talking. You see investors being exposed to product they have never thought they exist. So it's just an amazing place to be. This year's IPA saw 985 applications, of which 10 finalists were selected across a range of fields. The winning innovations are determined based on the product's uniqueness and their potential contribution to socio-economic development in Africa. The nominees shared their big ideas with us. This innovation is uh, it's called the Ure Malaria Test Innovation. Uh, it's a very simple test that can tell you in 25 minutes or less if your fever is due to malaria using just a few drops of urine. Well, the tractor is um, a three-wheel mini tractor modeled on a motorcycle. Um, through alterations made to the chassis, the gearbox, and its configuration, we've been able to turn it into a three-wheeler. It will do what a normal tractor would do, but to a smaller scale. So it's perfectly suited for smallholder farmers. The whole idea is to increase their productivity, remove all the tedious labor that goes into manual farming, and make them more productive. Um, typically, um, small-scale farmers in Africa do about one hectare 
cultivate about one hectare. We're saying with this, they'll be able to increase their farm holding from about one hectare to about five or ten hectares. So my innovation is Exotype. It's an online software platform that turns a next generation DNA sequencing machine into a really low cost drug resistance testing tool. So drug resistance is a massive and growing problem in the world. Um, antibiotic resistance is um, anticipated to cause 300 million premature deaths by 2050. And so we really need to get on top of this. And one of the ways to do it is testing and diagnostics. It's really important for diagnostics to make sure people take the right drugs and don't take drugs they don't need, but also really, really important for surveillance so we can track this problem and watch it spread. What Green Tower technology is about is energy efficiently uh, heating hot water. So we are able to save 90% electricity compared to electric water heaters. Uh, electric water heaters currently are one of the scourges of Africa. In South Africa alone, there are more than 6 million water heaters that are consuming up to a third of our electricity grid. Our innovation involves provision of carbon negative soil conditioner to small scale all the farmers. What we do, uh, we give these farmers our reactors which we have engineered, they are smokeless. So when we give them, they convert their crop waste, all their crop waste into biochar. Once they have their biochar, we buy the biochar from them and add our special recipe which we have also engineered to make a complete fertilizer and sell it back to them at an affordable cost of up to maximum of $15 per 50 kg. My innovation is a range of electronic equipment that will manage the demand that is generated in electricity supply grids. Uh, I'm the designer of the PowerGuard range of, of products. PowerGuard is a, a range of products that will manage the peak demand in any uh, distribution network. After the break, we find out who walks away with the prestigious Innovation Prize for Africa and the launch of Seed, a book highlighting the power of innovation for Africa. Stay tuned. Welcome back to this special on the Innovation Prize for Africa 2016. Over the course of the two days, AIF launched its book, Seed. Throughout the book, examples of pioneering entrepreneurs who have achieved success are highlighted, as well as insights from innovative stakeholders across the continent, including the managing director of AIF, Elodie de Wallencourt. So um, this book is really uh, the idea that we would want, we wanted to, uh, from the start, show what is innovation in Africa, what is already happening. In all corners of Africa, you have people starting to do real stuff. And we could see that emerging from all the uh, Innovation Prize for Africa editions. We wanted to have this in a visual way for people that are not familiar uh, with these uh, environments to see, really. And so this book is about people that are nourishing the network of IAF, their contributions, and us putting all that into images and words. We just wanted to show this big community around AIF. So I was approached to be the editor of this very interesting project that not only commemorates the African Innovation Foundation's 10 years of, of existence, but also innovators in Africa in general. And my theory is that in Africa we solve real problems. And that's how I define innovation, as solving real problems. So often you see innovation as, you know, a rebranding of a financial product. But in Africa, where we practice what's often called innovation out of necessity, what you see is very significant problems being tackled and being solved with very clever and very frugal solutions. And, and this is the kinds of things that I like to celebrate. I, I, I'm sick to death of this Afro-pessimism that there's something profoundly wrong with our continent. There isn't. Sure, we have our challenges, but everybody does. And the fact that we have the problems we have is something of a godsend because these are the problems that everybody has and these are the problems that everybody needs to solve. 
access to electricity is a profound issue for everybody, not just us in Africa. Sure, more people in Africa have a cell phone than access to electricity, but the UN says one and a half billion people around the world don't have access to electricity. So when we solve these problems with very clever solar problem, the solar solutions like MCOPO or off-grid electric, these kinds of things spread to the rest of the world. And it is this profound way of solving real problems, I think, that is that is that needs to be celebrated. And it's books like this, Seed, that do just that. Seed was published by AIF founder Jean-Claude Bastos de Moraes. The book touches on some of the personal experiences throughout his life, which inspired him to give back to Africa. Yeah, the idea behind the book basically is uh, is we wanted first not to do a real book. We wanted to, uh, to create a story, a storyline about what we have done with a lot of pictures. The text, if you, will, if you will see, is not representative for a book. It's more kind of a table book with pictures. And the, the, the story behind is we want to show that if you have in you a kind of a seed which has been planted by uh, anyone which had an importance in your life, in my case, it's my grandmother, which uh, uh, planted that seed. I then have created out of that seed a tree and this tree should uh, uh, have kind of a, a fruit which is also uh, creating a new seed and this seed should then create another tree and so forth and so on. One of these seeds planted, which is also mentioned in the book, is the soap factory in Angola. It's the country's first hybrid innovation hub which supports social development projects to drive social inclusion and bridge the gap between the formal and informal economy. The hub is located in the heart of Jorge Yahenda M. Luanda, the largest slum in the country. Uh, the soap factory is, is basically the next level. First, we wanted to do uh, at innovation uh, uh, after the kind of aftermath of the Innovation Prize for Africa, where we've created the, 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 the spirit of African innovation. We have uh, disseminated that, we've created the platform. Now, um, there has been a kind of a need which has driven and came from the uh, community of innovators and even from uh, the population. They said, well, you have done that much, we sense it, we're grateful, but what's next? Um, so the need uh, for, uh, 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 of, of the population and of the ones who don't have enough in, in their life um, has inspired me and I've said, okay, I need to go where they are because um, for them, they won't believe uh, that they are capable to do uh, something in a, in a very sophisticated environment. So we need to go there in the center of, uh, of, of, uh, of the slums and create a place, a creative ecosystem which fosters innovation and entrepreneurship. And we have then uh, done that in a manner which is very kind of a freestyle, uh, 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 um, organic, uh, non non-sophisticated as you can see here around you in the uh, 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 the soap factory is the same is done out of containers is done uh, out of uh, out of recycled material the goal is not focus on the form but focus on the content inside you're gonna find 3d printers you're gonna find CNC machines so that the youngsters which are there have no fear of this technology but have the courage just to touch it and so that they don't think it's a black box or a magical thing to do something but that they that the barriers of entry uh, to technology to uh, entrepreneurship is as low as possible so we go there we show them how to take that apart and how to assemble it again and what i have seen so far is exceptional also launched at the event is the zua hub Zua Hub, a private network with an active community to connect innovators, investors, mentors and service providers, was launched so the conversation around innovation can carry on long after IPA. So the Zua Hub really is a product of uh, a feedback we have received over the five years. So remember, we, you know, we started in Ethiopia, we, we are in Botswana, you know, five editions bring together different innovation enablers. 6,000 uh, innovators from 50 countries. So at the end, we only have about 45 nominees, it's 14 winners. So people keep asking us, so you say you actually catalyzing innovation spirit by only assumably supporting one of you, what are you doing for everyone else? 
So we then we created the Zoa Hub. So Zoa Hub is a platform that is going to allow uh, innovators to connect, to collaborate, to access resources, meaning coaches, mentors, investors, and uh, and also at the same time it's a platform for innovation enablers. So we here we have people from Techno Park Innovation Hub in Pretoria, in Tanzania, in Kerab, in Rwanda, just to name a few, right? They meet here, but they go back and get busy. So we wanted to have a platform actually where they can continue to, to discuss what starts here. And not just discuss, agree on actions that we can do together. And us as AIF, as a catalyzer, catalyze this networking that we lead to actions where actually we can come up with a Pan-African innovation ecosystem that group different ecosystems that support each other, that capture the best practice so we can cut reinventing the wheel, which is the West, as you know. So the best practice in Morocco could be shared with the best practice in, in, in Ichigari. A lot of time is, is saved, money is saved, efficiency is done, and everyone is happy. So that's what Zoab is, is going to provide. After two days of celebrating Africa's innovators, it culminated with a gala dinner. This is where the prize winner of the Innovation Prize for Africa was announced. At the event, the President of Botswana, Lieutenant General Sarete Kama Ian Kama, welcomed the awards to Botswana. We are very proud and thankful to host the event for recognizing and awarding top African innovators whom you have nominated as deserving candidates for this year's prize. This, we hope, will stimulate and motivate local innovators and inventors to acknowledge this level of competitiveness. I therefore thank the AIF West Jester to bring such creativity to be rewarded in our country. And our expectation is that it will set precedence for future nominees from Botswana. During the evening, three prizes were awarded the Social Impact Prize, Second Prize, and of course, the Grand Prize. The winner received 100,000 US dollars, runner-up and Social Impact will receive 25,000 US dollars each. The Social Impact Prize went to Eddie Agbo, who developed the urine test for malaria, a rapid non-blood diagnostic medical device that can diagnose malaria in less than 25 minutes. Oh man, feels so great, but it's hard to describe. It's hard, really hard to describe how you feel. You have to feel it to know it. But I, I don't have words to describe it. Our plan now is to really begin to push the product out, especially to other countries in Africa, uh, where malaria is endemic. So we don't believe that with this innovation, people shouldn't be uh, assuming that every fever is malaria, because every fever is not malaria. So our intent now is to begin to really reach out to other countries to introduce this innovation to other countries. The second prize went to Imogen Wright. Imogen's innovation, Exotype, is a software solution that enables healthcare workers to determine HIV positive patients' responsiveness to ARV drug treatment. It feels absolutely wonderful. It's such a prestigious event, such a prestigious award, and I was in complete shock when I found out my, my nominees were so incredible, I didn't think I had a chance at anything. So we're planning to use it to expand as quickly as we can into a TB drug resistance test. Um, this is a massive burden on the continent and it's growing, and we need to be able to track that, and that's, that's where we're going to channel the money. And finally, the winner of the grand prize, Valentin Agon. Valentin developed Apipalu, an anti-malaria drug treatment made from natural plant extract. It is significantly cheaper than available anti-malarial drugs. Je suis ce soir très heureux, très heureux parce que j'ai gagné ce grand prix, ce grand prix, ce grand prix qui me qui me donne une reconnaissance continentale, panafricaine, une visibilité continentale. J'en suis fier. Je suis fier que sur le continent africain, il y a un prix qui, qui, qui comme un grand tour permet de délever les Africains, de les montrer au monde entier et de les reconnaître. Et, et cela nous, me permet de, de dire que la science est universelle. La science n'est pas seulement occidentale, chinoise ou japonaise, mais la science est aussi africaine. Et nous devons répondre aux besoins de l'Afrique en créant et en inventant. Oh, I'm so proud about what he has done. We followed him uh, quite some time. 
his 16 years which he is researching about what he's doing and a product against malaria coming from Africa for Africans. This is my dream. My dream comes true because malaria is one of the biggest uh, killer uh, uh, um, in Africa and um, finding a solution which is based on natural products it's just what I was dreaming about since a long period of time. After the award ceremony, Jean-Claude Bastos de Marais renewed his commitment to African innovators by announcing that he'll be supporting the Innovation Prize for Africa for another five years. Yeah, I hope that the next five years are going to be an evolution of this journey which we already had. Um, we're going to focus, uh, 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 we're going to do the same thing which we have done. We're going to open up to more uh, uh, innovators. We're going to make sure that the innovators find a home which they already found. We're going to create more uh, uh, innovation around for Africa and we're going to increase our database and we're going to make sure that um, these innovators interconnect between themselves because we've seen that if an innovator can talk to another innovator about the problem he has, they can share the ideas and the problems and then you have even better solution coming up. Um, and um, as you have heard in the, in the award, we're also going to create uh, something which is for the massification of innovation. So that high standard which you see now, we're going to have another kind of innovation which we're going to uh, uh, look for, which is more at the garage type of innovation. It's going to be a, uh, um, a, a place, a test, a test, a prototype which we're going to do in Angola, um, in the slums, which are um, in the center of the slums of 800,000 people, um, density of 23,000 people per square kilometer. And um, we'll see what that journey is going to bring. Africa faces unique challenges, which require unique innovations. The importance of innovations by Africans for Africans to improve prosperity and improve livelihoods for all was a key theme which came out of this event, celebrating Africa's innovators.